Okay. Right, uh, the woman with the hat, she's been waving that hat around. So you got to have a hat. That, that's a huge advantage in terms of getting called on. Hi, my name is Bev Crumb Gasme, and I actually used to teach school in the district in which Seed Savers is located. And we have a number of students, uh, former students here, that I taught. How was she? Was she a good teacher? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you got you got, you got a thumbs up. What can I say? What would you teach? High school social studies. Well, that's important stuff. Uh, many unions, especially public sector unions, help you get elected in 2008. Those public sector unions and the members gain their salaries and benefits through collective bargaining. Recently, those benefits have been under attack. And I realize that this is a state issue mostly. But what can you do to help support collective bargaining in the states and most of all, support the public, uh, the public sector unions, the middle class, many of whom are union members. Thank you. Well, <laughs> first of all, let's, let's make one thing clear. The right of workers to come together and join a union is part of what built America's middle class. It's the reason why we've got a minimum wage. It's the reason why uh, folks have weekends. It's the reason why uh, you have basic protections on the job from an abuse, uh, abusive employer. There are a whole range of things that people take for granted, even if they're not in a union, that they wouldn't have had if it had not been for collective bargaining. So, so I, I think it is, it is very important, whether you are in a union or not, and I speak particularly to young people because you've grown up at a time when, uh, in a lot of circles, union some, somehow is a dirty word. To understand all this is is people joining together so they've got a little more leverage, so they've got better working conditions, better wages, they can better support their family. And a lot of us entered into the middle class because our parent or our grandparent was in a union. Remember that. When I hear this kind of anti-union rhetoric and anti-union assaults, I'm thinking these folks have amnesia. They don't remember that that helped build our middle class and strengthen our economy. Now, you're right. Most of this activity right now is being done at the state level, although I will tell you that some of the assaults on collective bargaining are taking place at the federal level. You remember this uh, FAA situation where they were shutting down the airports for uh, threatening to shut down the airports and, and we were going to be laying off tens of thousands of people? The reason that happened was because uh, folks on the other side in the House of Representatives decided, let's try to slip in a provision that could make it harder for people to collectively bargain uh, in the aviation industry. And Democrats wouldn't go along. And so they said, OK, well, we're not going to renew funding for this. So we're seeing some of that at the federal level as well. And we're fighting back, pushing back against these efforts to diminish the capacity to exercise their basic freedoms and their basic rights. Now, at the state level, In addition to just providing vocal support for public employees, uh, what I also have been trying to do is to help states so that they can meet their obligations to their public employees and emphasize how important it is to our future collectively that we have, for example, teachers that are getting paid a good wage. We can't recruit the kinds of teachers that we need in the classroom, and in most countries that are doing well right now educationally, their teachers are revered. They get paid on par with doctors and engineers because there's an understanding that this is a critical profession for the future of the nation. I do say, though, to my friends in the public sector unions, 
that it is important that you are on the side of reform where reform is needed. Because the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that at a time when, you know, everybody's belt tightening, there's nothing wrong with a union saying to itself, you know what, we know budgets are hard right now. Let's sit down and say we're willing to negotiate so that we're making some sacrifices to maintain the number of teachers in the classroom and keep uh, you know, class sizes at, at a reasonable level. We're willing to make some modifications in terms of uh, how our pension systems work so that they're sustainable for the next generation of teachers. As long as it's a conversation, as opposed to it simply being imposed and collective bargaining rights being stripped away. So, so I think it's important, remember we talked about shared sacrifice and sh burden sharing. Well, the, the, you know, this is an area where there's got to be burden sharing as well. If a public sector employee is able to retire at 55 with 80% of their wages, and the average public sector employee has got a 401k that they've just seen decline by about 20% and they have no idea how they're going to retire, and they're feeling burdened by a lot of taxes, and they don't feel like the public sector employees are making any adjustments whatsoever to reflect the tough economic realities that are facing folks who are not uh, protected, then there's going to be a natural backlash. If there's a feeling that uh, unions aren't partners in reform processes in things like education, then it, they're going to end up being an easy target. So there's got to be an understanding of, on the one hand, we've got to revere public employees. I, I was saying when I was in uh, Cannon Falls, you know, people are tired of politics, but they're not tired of government. They may not realize it, but government are our troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. Government are our teachers in the classroom. Government are the FEMA folks who help people when there's a flood or a tornado or a natural disaster. But we also have to acknowledge, and sometimes Democrats aren't good at this, is acknowledging that not every program in, in government's working perfectly. And we've got to make adjustments to become more efficient and, 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 and more productive, just like the private sector does. And, and the more we're willing to be open to new ideas and reform and change, the more we're going to be able to rally public opinion behind all the outstanding work that public employees do, as opposed to public opinion being turned against public employees. All right? Okay, how many more? Uh, 